Hi, this is PDF Bergzer Arcade at bergzerarcade.com and this is part four of our little hack and slash tutorial. So this week we're going to be working on our attack system. So the first thing we have to figure out is, is exactly how we want the, the combat to work. So let's start off with our player. If our player goes to attack our enemy QB, exactly what do we want to happen? Uh, so the first thing we're going to have to do is figure out a way for him to target the cube and then have the user press a button or a key on the keyboard to initiate the attack. So let's start off with those two things first. So let's come up to our scripts folder. We'll create a new C sharp script. We're just going to call this player attack. Then we'll double click it to open it up in mono development. Rename the class. All right, so we want the player to be able to target the enemy QB. Uh, we can do that easily just by creating a public game object. And we'll just call it target. Now we're going to take this script, player attack, we'll attach it to our player. When we click on our player, we'll have the target variable exposed here. For now, we're just going to take our enemy QB and drag him down. So the player is always going to have him targeted. So the next thing we want to do is be able to have the player press a key on the keyboard to have him initiate an attack on the cube. So we'll go down to our update function. And we're going to check for a keyboard input. Uh, when the player presses the F key, that's going to be the attack key. So we're just going to say if, we're going to use the input class. Mono development doesn't seem to want to cooperate today because it's autocomplete. I'm just going to save this off, quit, then reopen it. I'm using the beta version of Unity, so all the bugs aren't quite worked out yet, but it's definitely a good work in progress. So input dot, there we go, get key, actually we're going to get key up. And that takes a key code, so we're going to say key code, dot, and we're going to use the F key. Okay, so what's this line do? We're looking for an input and we're looking for the get key up. Now the way that works is when a player presses the key, there's a few things you can look for. You can look for the get, well let's look at all the properties for input. You can get key, get key down, get key up. You can look for the mouse buttons, either down or up. And you can also grab touches if you're using a touch device. Now the main ones we're going to be looking at are the keyboard ones. So that's get key down and get key up. Now if you picked get key down, when the player presses, the, presses your F key down in this instance, it would initiate a, an attack. And as long as they kept holding it down, it would keep attacking and attacking and attacking. Uh, we don't want that. We want when the player releases the F key to have the attack go off. So we'll just erase what we were doing there. And we're just going to call a function called attack. Uh, now we'll go make that function. We'll make it private. It doesn't return anything, so we'll use void attack. Okay, so now we're going to want to get a reference to the enemy's health script. So we're going to say enemy, we're just going to call it eh for now, is equal to, we'll have to type cast it, so we're going to use enemy health, we're going to say game object, oh, so we already have the game object in target, so we'll just say target, get component, and the name of the component we're looking for, which is enemy health. 
Now once we have a reference to his enemy health script, we can call the function that decreases his health. So we just type in eh dot and I believe it was called adjust health or something. Yeah, adjust current health. And we'll say he loses 10 health every time we hit him. And we'll just save that off. So let's go try it out. Make sure it's attached to our player. And we have the target set to the evil QB. And we'll hit play. So the evil QB comes running at us. And as we hit F, you know, his health goes down. Now, there's a few things that are just logically wrong with this. Now let's turn off the evil QB's movement, so his AI script. And let's start it up again. Now first off, this is, should be a melee attack. So when we're way back here and we're hitting F, he's still losing health, so we're still hitting him. We'll want to fix that. And we'll restart it again. And another thing is, if he's not even in front of us, he can be behind us, and we're hitting F, we're still hitting him. So we'll want to fix that too. So the first thing we should work on is the range. Make sure that he's within a certain range of us before we can attack him. So let's do that. We'll go down to our attack function. And we're going to create a variable. We'll do a float. And we're just going to call it distance. This will be equal to a vector 3 dot distance. Then we'll want to give it two vector three. So we're going to use our target dot transform dot position. So the position of the thing we want to attack, and then our transform. So we'll say transform dot position. Then we can set a debug here to see what our position is. So we'll just say distance. And let's save that and let's find a good distance for our melee attack. So we'll hit play. I'm going to open up my console. I'm going to find my cube. Now I'm going to start moving towards them. You've noticed I'm way back here when I hit F. That's 7.75 units away. That's still too far. I want to be about here at most. So that's 2.4. Let's go a little closer. So about 2. Should be a good melee range. So we'll make it 2. So down here we'll just simply check the distance. If distance is less than 2, then we'll get the reference and hit it for 10. So let's try that out. We'll start it up. Okay, we're way back here, way beyond two. Let's open the console again. Hit F. So we're 12.7 away, and we notice he's not losing any health. Move a little closer. We're 2.3 away, and he's not losing any health. A little closer. We're just over two. And there we go, we're just under. So that does seem a little close. Uh, let's say about here. So we're going to go say 2.5. For within 2.5 units, we can hit up. Since this is a float and you're using a decimal value, make sure you put an F on the end. Okay, so that's done. Now the next thing we're going to want to work on is make sure that he's in front of us. 